What's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome back to the Bad Days Podcast. I'm your host, Hassan Kader, with your other host. Yes, I'm also the host, Isaiah What's your Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> There's your name. What the fuck? <laughs> um, so, uh, this week's episode is sponsored by... We have a sponsor. We don't. <laughs> That's a terrible bit. <laughs> That'd be like, oh, so you got really excited. Surprise you th- me, You thought bro. we were going to get paid. <laughs> we oh, don't get paid to do this. Silly me wanting money. How dare look, I? Look, <laughs> we're not going to get paid for this. The YouTube channel has almost 500 subscribers now. Yes. That's not at all organic growth. That's me shouting it out on the main hey, channel. <laughs> the, the hustle should be respected. Yeah. Gary hey, V, respected. This is all, it's all our own. Hours. It's all your own uh, work putting it in. Technically, yeah. I mean, you're, you're shouting it out on the live streams, and then people are coming, so it's not cheating. It's not technically cheating. Not technically, technically cheating. So, what's happened this week? What's the roundup? Did I hit a million subscribers before the last podcast? I'm not sure, but let's pretend that you just did. I just hit a million subscribers! Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! I'm Hassan Kader, and I haven't looked at this... <laughs> audio on that one <laughs> okay guys if that just like blew your ears out sorry we're, we're trying new things with the audio Love setup seeing, um nice. but yeah i hit 1 million subscribers so 10 years of work a lot of people are like you've been on youtube for 10 years and i'm like yes on and off though don't think yeah. that i've worked <laughs> been every grinding day. out here bro bro imagine i made videos every day for 10 years and didn't hit a million. Oh, you would have i would hit a million like five years ago. Oh, easily. I, I would say you we, we would probably wouldn't have been with us this far down the line. You mean like dead? <laughs> you, you probably would have either got left somewhere or been depressed and and then. Uh, <laughs> 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 there was so many ways for you to, have, dude. I just like <sighs> there's this level of me just like letting you dig yourself into a deeper hole. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to, you know. You know, we we all know this is the bad days podcast, and sometimes mm-hmm. days get really really bad, and especially then, when you're trying to do something that you really love, and it's not working out for ten years. Right. And I feel like after five years, you would have just said like, "Oh, screw this whole life thing. I'm out. Peace. Starting over." As if I hadn't failed at other things <laughs> for the five years during. But you that. didn't. I mean, that, <laughs> this specific thing in your life though was something that you like. This is unique. Because it's like it's creative. Yeah, no one else wants to be your a own YouTuber. humor. <laughs> like no one else, like no. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been an interesting journey. Um, we were at a bar the other night. Me, uh, Nathan, and Graham, oh. and Connor. Uh, we were all kicking it, and uh, I posted some. No, I didn't post anything. Uh, I had a random friend. Julianne, Julianne sent me a Snapchat. I think mm. I can, yeah, I don't think Julianne, somebody, this is nothing, nothing about this situation is bad. How so dare you they don't need anonymity. Julianne sent me a Snapchat of a friend's giving party she was at, mm. and it was like the most popular people from Hoover High School, like the popular girls. Like the cheerleaders, slash, like they were really nice, mm. but they weren't particularly nice. Like none, none of them were like mean or vicious to me at all. Like let sure. me stress this. Not mean popular girls, just girls who are popular. Distant popular girls. Distant. Distant, I think, is the best way to put them. Because I think some of them, not all of them, and not not any of them in specific, they kind of had this air of like, they almost seem like they're better than you always. <laughs> and th- not that they talk down to you even, but they don't talk to you. <laughs> like, they it was don't talk really to weird. you, bro. But Julian sends me a video of all of them, like pans around the room. Not all of us talking about your uh, stalking your Instagram right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? And then and then I'm like, and and I swiped up, and I'm friends with two of them that like mm. I, I frequently. One of them is Hayden Woods, who owns Bear Social Media, and she's mm. super nice. And uh, she's not working with us on bad days, by the way. Aww. She ended up being too busy with some other stuff. But she said in January when she's done with training on her newer other job or whatever, she might look into it. At that point, hopefully you're doing all the work, and I won't have yeah. to hire someone out of house. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, Hayden and I are cool, and there's another girl in there that I'm, I'm friends with. Like, I swipe up on her stories all the time because I think she's like a very sweet, interesting person. So I, I had swiped up on like the meal, like the spread of food looked really good, and I was like, oh mm. hey, that looks fantastic, and oh y'all are all still friends. I think it's cute when like groups of friends stay together post high school, like yeah. five years later. Um, and then you know, one of the girls, Hayden, just responded about the food thing, and then the other one was like, oh gee, we were just talking about you. What does that mean? <laughs> and then I was like. All good things, I hope. And then she just didn't say anything. She Oof. liked the message. Um, and Julianne's like, no. She's like, yeah, obviously, Hassan, we're sitting around making fun of you, not talking about your millions of followers and how you're <laughs> basically famous now. <laughs> yeah, bro. They're like, oh, my God, I hate him even more than I did before. He's God, so in high school, he was a loser. Famous. Now he's a famous loser <laughs> with resources. Oh, my God, <laughs> With a podcast. Ugh. Oh, man. You should have just blended into the background and then, and then came up and then gotten popular randomly yeah 
Yeah, dude. You just had to go out and try to make friends your senior year. Had to Whoops, try to. I had to be social. Had to try to do the right thing. What you're supposed to do in high school. You made friends senior year. You did less than me by a big margin, but you did stuff. Yeah, I guess so. I it's all it's all a big blur to me because sometimes I, when I look back on high school, I remember both my freshman year and my senior year all kind of the same. No, not uh, even a little bit. I, I know it's not actually the same. But let's like uh let's talk about some cringy Hudson stories oh, and one I that I, I've never told you even off the podcast. Oh no! Um, oh, this is the okay. Okay. Which okay. one is this one? No, no, you were you were telling me about a story you're gonna tell me. No, gonna, this isn't it. Oh, I don't remember what that is. I don't oh. know what you're fucking talking about oh. there. I'd like you to figure that one out. Brainstorm whatever that is. Okay. Um, no, but you didn't tell me what it was gonna be though. So maybe this. I was saying maybe this was. Fuck the one. no! <laughs> now I feel like there's something interesting for me to tell you. I don't remember. I've messed up this podcast episode. Mm. We're five minutes in and I've goofed it. No. Everyone, stop um, watching this now. Yeah, get over this. Stop watching it. And most of them are listening to it. By the way, I applied for us to get the Spotify thing, so where the video version of the podcast will be on Spotify hopefully soon if they approve us. Oh, so, weren't we already on Spotify? We're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and like every audio streaming platform, but not mm-hmm. visually. Oh. So Spotify's not having a video side because they got Joe Rogan's podcast. Oh, on yeah. I was wondering so, how it was going to yeah. Besides that, uh, embarrassing story. Freshman-ish, sophomore year, I discovered I can do the Mickey voice, mm-hmm. right? So I started doing prank calls on people that I knew. Um, there was this girl uh, back in the day, and her name was her name was Avery. I don't even remember what her last name is, in all honesty. Uh, super... N- nice, my n- I don't remember her being nice. If I'm being honest, actually, she was pretty. She was uh, a dancer, super c- cool. I remember her saying things that I that struck me in my brain as cool. I think I remember. And I don't know what you're talking about. I remember her saying something about like liking Disney or something like that. And I had some other friends, like mutual friends, that like knew her uh, and knew that she liked Disney. So I prank called her as Mickey Mouse, of course. Thought it was the coolest thing ever. Didn't tell her it was me, because <laughs> because. She, Yo, okay, you can keep on talking. She thought it was James Patterson. Oh no, yeah, dude. Bro. And, and so, so I, I went on to have, like, have a crush on this girl for some time, and uh, it was while I was stuck in the Middle East. We're not going to get into me being stuck in the Middle East. Oh. This is not that podcast. That, that episode will come when this <laughs> Wait, podcast. That's the hundredth episode. No, when this podcast makes fucking money, then I'll talk about it. But it doesn't make <laughs> any money right now, so no. Um, hmm. So James and uh, our other friend at the time who was uh, he's mutual friends with our friend Nathan mm. all three of us were a little bit of a crew back in the day and uh, they got mad at me while I was stuck in the Middle East they were like making fun of me a lot like just like bullying me on social media we have this friend Happens. named James and James is just like this guy who we're talking like in the eighth grade he's going to get drunk and like dating three girls at once so like not a not but in that regard i don't think that's cool or good but like as an eighth grader it's like whoa look at him the coolest kid in town Dude. bro yeah he's like 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 he's over here like i'm still talking he's about drinking bro like whoa bro he like wild. talks about he went to g easy bro he went to the g whoa Dude, he went bro. to the g easy <laughs> concert i don't know that was a big deal back in the day mm. um not a big deal to me but a big deal to like that group of people but mm-hmm. he was it, he didn't go to our school he was my neighbor so he like went to a different school but he had a huge reputation in our school just because of how well known he was for that whole deal hmm. um just the ultimate ladies man back when we were kids and to this day Still from what very I said, we, so. we, we had lunch with him a few months ago yeah we're not really friends with him like that like we don't hang out and talk so we get little updates about his life and he's just the same uh except it was weird uh, being around him with you guys there because yeah. i met him before but i couldn't get a good vibe of him and then when it was like oh okay yeah this but here's the thing though was. he loves comic books things you don't ever hear about him Comic book nerd like me, all the way through. He watched Young Justice with me growing up. We were like best friends playing Batman. That's mm. why we bonded. Super nerd. One of the smartest people I know. Like straight up. Like I mean, crazy yeah, he's smart. down there at UAB doing like Something. stuff. Yeah, yeah, doing med when school. I, when med I was down doing my lab thing, he was in but there. Crazy intelligent guy. But ultimate, ultimate ladies man. And very, very... Uh, at this time, they were angry at me. Uh, I didn't actually do anything wrong. They were just bullying me. They just decided not to like me. And I stand by this because I read the group chat later. Years later, like five years ago, <laughs> which is probably five years after this all happened, I read, I read the group chat during this, and it was just like, Hassan's kind of annoying, right? Let's fucking hate him. Which is, hey, that's fair, I guess. It's always um, how it begins. Huh? It be, it be like that sometimes. So, um, I'm stuck in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. I cannot come home. I'm homesick as hell. I've been gone for two months now, and uh, then I get a Snapchat from uh, from James. He takes a picture at the y- local YMCA with Avery. Oh. Just like a picture of her. And then, and then the other friend sent a picture of the two of them together, and he says, fuck you, Hussin. As in, like, out of spite, homie went and, like, was this girl's first kiss. Oh, my. I'm not even shitting what? you. What? I'm not even shitting you. It's 
<laughs> How have I not heard this before? <laughs> because it never, it never came up again, and we never talked about it again. That wasn't even the story I was intending to tell you, by the way. <laughs> it just happened tangentially. But um, That's so, so messed up. out of spite, and then they also rolled my house with toilet paper while I was gone. We had to pay. Uh, you're like, too. You're too forgiving of people, bro. Bro, yeah, Nathan have was one of the people who did it. Bro, I wouldn't have yeah, any can, can people in my life. Can we clown him bro? tonight? He's coming over tonight. Can we clown him about that? I, we, we will definitely. Dude, I got in the group chat, and they're like, they're like, you can't prove it was us, bro. In the group chat, they took a picture of my house covered in toilet paper, and it says "F you, Hassan," <laughs> and it was a groupie that I had left, so I could just rejoin. <laughs> <laughs> they're so dumb but this is that that's that's a lifetime Jeez. ago i'm not i'm not angry about it but i think it's hilarious like out of spite this girl that i had just like the, i had the most unnecessary crush around, like middle or early high school crushes it's like it's crazy how much you like somebody you literally know jack shit about um, for real though it's it like, hits different pretty pretty person oh my god my whole life has started and we ended should with be you married bro. We, i was put on this earth for you it's you know <laughs> I don't know what happened around freshman year but like that's all when all the cringiest stuff. Who were you? Who was your freshman year crush? It was it wasn't like. Did you have one? Oh, I, on. I did. I did. Reveal I did. it. Reveal it on the pod. I'm not gonna reveal it. I use the person's real name. I'm not gonna. I can't. Why not? I, baby steps, bro. I'm not like you. <laughs> so Zay, Zay. when I okay, okay can I the tell total, the story first? The total listeners for this podcast is a hundred. I understand, but the internet is forever. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. okay, so I let, let me just. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Let me get this water from. He's gotta, he's gotta hydrate before he, uh, you know, lets all the secrets out of the vault. And I've told you this story before. Mm-hmm. Um, so freshman year, I was, uh, I was uh, into some artsy stuff, and one of the artsy stuff, uh, well, one of the girls that was also into the same artsy stuff, like in the same artsy program I was a part of, um. Uh, she, I was, I was like, you know, she like, she was like nice to me, you know, but that's like, you know, the thing about like when you're 14 and there's like a pretty girl and all she has to do is be nice to you like say something like, Oh, that was a good job out there. Like, okay. We're like, we're in love now. Right. I like that you said when you're 14, isn't that the same for you right now? Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm fucking with you. No, I say I, I didn't. I, I, was, I was about to cycle in life my entire. You just like <laughs> actually like looked and tried to reflect. I was just throwing a choke <laughs> out there, man. Holy I'm shit. I'm self-reflective. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but no, um, so you know, what I did was, uh, Jesus Christ, bro, this is so Should I get mine? Do you want me, should we pause it and I'll tell you the cringier version of my story? Cause I didn't tell you the cringe. That actually wasn't. I want to get part. this off my chest okay, first. get it off your chest. Do it, do it. You got I this, I want to get man. it off my chest. <laughs> so what I did was, cause I was socially inept and this wasn't like a unique thing with this one person. I did this with a lot of people, but th- I, I did a, a particularly cringy thing with this person where, uh, like I... I contacted them over Kick. Uh, what, what, Should we give them contact with Kick Messenger? Is? Kick Messenger basically it was like it was like an iMessage thing, but it was like you could be anonymous, where you could like it was it was I'd explain it better. I, I don't know. It, it, Kick Messenger was like Snapchat before Snapchat was. A yeah, thing. yeah, it yeah. It was yeah, like yeah. the the app you'd use to message people without your parents finding out about it. It was like very under wraps, real underground kind of app. Um, yeah. I came to find out later. That's how middle school people exchanged nudes and shit. Like, I, <laughs> look, I wasn't in the loop on that one. I, I that's not what I was doing on Kick Messenger. Oh, no, but no, I wasn't. That's either. what was happening apparently. No, uh, so that's what Kick is. It's like you know, Messenger. You can message people. I chose to be anonymous. Um, I and I chose for this girl. I I like I hit her up over Kick. You know, and like I basically had her play like a guessing game of who I was. Um, for like like maybe like a week or something maybe maybe just like a few days but i was like i had to guess like w- like who i was i was like hey merry christmas uh, guess who i am <laughs> <laughs> merry christmas <laughs> i see you this when you're sleeping weirdest, i know when you're awake the weirdest creepiest <laughs> thing on the planet to do but she was so nice to me even after she even after i revealed myself but yeah it was like it was like that basically i did that and then i re- oh here's me i'm actually me I'm just uh, so weird. I can't really do this kind of thing in person. So I hope I'm not too creepy. Uh, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, look, look, you're <laughs> <laughs> yo, I cannot believe this is some of the shit we would do back. In- I mean, you're not like, this isn't, I, I feel like I, that's the kind of thing, like I'll, I'll, I'll go months like forgetting about that, but then like something in, in my environment will trigger me like in the middle of the night. I'll be like, why the hell did I do that, bro? <laughs> why did I do what I think was going to happen? What I think was going to happen. It was lame. Yeah. So I go. did basically that, but worse. Oh, so 
um, before it was publicly known that I was the Mickey Mouse guy, mm-hmm. I did the voice. I could still do the voice. So there is a Snapchat account that exists. It's called like Mickey Mouse, like three wise or something like that, whatever it is. And um, <clears throat> I added a bunch of, I added one friend, like one person that I knew on Snapchat over there. Uh, that was like my neighbor at the time. And then like all of her friends had added it too because they're trying to figure out who it was. And it was just like sending like funny, make- I wasn't doing anything like super weird. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, no, everything that that was, <laughs> everything about the situation I've been uh, is very weird. Context, but I, <laughs> I uh, send send back and forth Snapchats with several people as this Mickey Mouse guy or whatever. Um, and it was just a weird situation. It was just a very weird thing. That was what saying. kind of conversations would you but have? I, I don't fucking remember. And and because I don't remember, I know I repressed it. Like, <laughs> and, and and that feels like distinctly repressed in my mind. So like. I did. It had to be weird. It had to be so I, weird. I just can't repress things. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how it's done. Uh, it's not healthy. <laughs> you know. I'm gonna have a um, vault in my mind. I just don't remember. It was. It, I think it was just cringy messages, like videos back and forth, and then like trying to guess who I am, and I'm like, oh boy, I'm not gonna tell you who I am. <laughs> <laughs> like really weird <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and uh, that went on for some time. Oh boy! But I got away with. I got away with it. Really? One or two people. The main girl, who's my friend, she knew. She didn't tell them, and then another one of them knew. Way later down the road, uh, I ended up going on a date with one of the girls, and she brings up this thing that actually this weird thing happened one time. And I was like, bro, no. Why oh, would no. you bring that oh, up on no. a date? That's oh, no. The because thing the Mickey you're... Mouse thing had become more prevalent in my life again. So, hey, there was another guy. She just didn't put it together that it could have been me. Oh, my God. Oh, so, she okay, I so thought she was she, talking about bro, you. She <laughs> didn't know that it was me. And I didn't know she was one of the girls because I could just slip my mind. Like, I honestly didn't know these people well enough. I just knew they were pretty girls. That's it. Pretty girls and hussing. That's all they had to be back then. Oh, boy. What's happening here? <laughs> um, I, th- I think it's a sophomore year of high school. Mm. And uh, and I ended up going on a date with this girl, like, senior year. And, uh, yeah, no, I never revealed it to them. I'm sure uh, maybe they figured it out. They had to have in some way. Who the fuck else was going to do that? <laughs> but Flush ended up showing on some of the most viral videos on the internet. Like, I feel like everyone <laughs> saw that, but... Um, uh, was she nice about it? Was she like, was she like upset about what happened? It's fucking weird, it's fucking weird, oh, weird, weird, no. weird, weird, weird. And and it's crazy because I ended up knowing these people later in life. But besides the point, I had some fucking cringy shit in high school. Holy crap! Um, something like I know what I was going to tell you, and I don't think I intended to tell you on the podcast because I remembered what that story is. I don't think I'm ready to do the ridicule <laughs> that one, bro. Hey, look, I mean, wait. Fuck, should we? Should I mean, we we're it? already this deep. No, bro, it's deeper. It's worse. It's how, worse. Much, how much worse could it possibly be? It's so bad. Like, maybe, no, I can't. I can't. Come I can't, on, I can't come on, say. bro. I don't think you understand. I'll never live this down. It's fine. I, can never I would never. Down. I would never clown you for something like that, bro. bro. Whatever it is. Do you trust me? Okay. Do you trust the internet? No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. Not at all. When I was, this was middle school. This okay. Is, this is, let me con- contextualize this. I was so young. Okay. I was so so young. The internet just became a basically thing. an adult people. This was so this was so young. It was before regulation stuff were in apps. There was like Tinder and you'd have like 18 and up mm-hmm. and there was Tinder for like 13 and up. It was the same app but you put in your age and you could still match with people at that young age. What? Very stupid. They only changed that in like 2016. What? Yeah. You could be a oh, that's yeah. Oh, oh. Yes. Yeah, 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 besides the point. I uh had a person that I knew that I used their pictures and made a fake <laughs> Tinder profile <laughs> at probably like t- too old to be doing that. I don't know, man. And uh, w- I wouldn't do anything inappropriate. I would just have conversations with Bro, very attractive girls. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. <laughs> that, is, that is so sad, bro. That is... <laughs> I'm gonna cut this. No, 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 no. I don't think that's as bad as you think it is. I think that's like I think that's probably something that a lot of people have done before. We later found out that somebody we knew in high school, senior year, somebody that is, for all intents and purposes, one of our friends. They've yet to admit to doing this, but we found out the truth about him doing this. There were a couple of seniors at Hoover High School that were really prominent, really popular guys, really nice, awesome people. There were football players and stuff like this, and someone we knew. Made grinder profiles of them. Now you know what this is. Is it clicking with you? And uh, we know who it is. They've never come clean to us. And uh, basically, lots of rumors about them being gay spread around. And the truth was that they were like adding people. Like they were they were matching with other gay people at uh, at Hoover High and stuff like that. And they were saying things like they're chatting up being normal. And then they'd be like, 
do you like this guy? Like, what do you think about this guy? As in himself. Uh, oh no! And it was—it's just as cringy. Just bro. <laughs> so not as bad as that. I would never reveal myself. There was one person I during that, that just, whole. That just—you know—just goes to show, like we all do stupid, cringy stuff out of uh, what's it? What's it? insecurity? Yeah. Insecurity and ch- immaturity. And I immaturity. Was, guys, I was so young. Please don't clown on me for that one. <laughs> I was so young. I did end up being friends with one of those people. One of those people I ended up like revealing who I actually was. Uh, and they're like, I just I didn't think that we'd have such a similar cringy story. <laughs> that, that I, and, and if we do, the, the rabbit hole has to go. I further. wonder how many. <laughs> um, oh boy, Nathan, Nathan, our friend Nathan. He, I'm gonna go and put it. I mean, he, he look, this is a fake name for a person, so I'm gonna put him on blast because I think this is one of the funniest things that's ever happened. Uh, he tries to add a freshman year of high school. He tried to add a girl that like we knew, but like not knew super well, mm-hmm. um, on Snapchat. And he like spells out her name. He's like, like to like see if he can find her Snapchat. Add someone. It's not her. It's not the right her. It is a girl with the same name from a different place that is the same age. Crazy luck. Crazy, crazy luck. Hmm. Whatever. I think maybe he was a year younger, a year older. Okay. And uh, they start Snapchatting. I don't think he's ever told because I don't think he's ever brings this up. But they Snapchatted for a while, start flirting, and he's like angel Christian boy, like would never do anything inappropriate, never, yeah. never do anything, and. Uh, this girl essentially like pitches to him that like, hey, on my senior trip, I'm gonna like like we're planning these trips and like part of his pass through Alabama and like starts trying to have an inappropriate conversation. He just deletes her and he's like, <laughs> under no circumstances can we ever talk about this ever again that I did this, <laughs> that I did this incredibly crazy thing. And he never talked to the real version, like the real the girl with the actual. Like, so he okay, so it was a, a girl that he thought he was talking to, but he ended no, up. No, no, no. He knew it wasn't her. Okay. So he adds a girl. It ends up being it's a, she's a pretty girl. Okay. With the same name from a different place, it just but happens the, to have the exact same first. The combo got too inappropriate for him, so he just like cut all ties and ghosted her. That's basically. what he says. But I don't know. Okay, I, I would like we we gotta bring it up with him tonight sure. and embarrass him. <laughs> Let's get him a little bit intoxicated and then really embarrass him with it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're those kind of friends, bro. Um, of course we are, Isaiah, because you know what? Your bad days are what are, are, your what are they? Best stories. <laughs> Let's go. I'm sure this will this will satisfy the folks that uh, that, that want want to stay on brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend's mom brought up the whole idea of doing a version of this where it's like uh us literally just telling bad stories or Talk, talking about bad days and how they are good stories and stuff like that and i i like that concept of the show like if we have guests on i'd like the format but for Ooh. us right now this is just about us talking <laughs> there's like no real structure to it and i think you know last episode we just ended <laughs> we're just yeah, like we didn't i'm even out have of anything. things to say now yeah. which is like that family guy episode we don't know how to end these anymore <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make any sense family guy i used to watch it back in the day and it used to be it had moments where it was good had moments where it was really bad and uh, we watched one of the newer newer seasons, like a couple episodes of it. It was so it makes weird. No fucking sense anymore. It was so like they were they they just do the most random, g- and some of it like made me laugh. It was like really <laughs> funny, but it was just like the most random like throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks kind of humor. Bro, they just like more so than usual because Family Guy's already like that kind of, but it's like it it was it was a bit too much. It's an animated show. So like when Think scenes cut, it just cuts the next scene. Yeah. This when they had them they had to turn <laughs> off the lights and had them standing in the dark while they animated them rebuilding a set around them as if it's like filmed. It's like a this theater thing. <laughs> and then the rats ended up being like human size. Yep. There. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff, uh. a lot of weird stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, cringy shit back in the day. I don't know why yeah. I brought all this up. I, I don't. You know, I just, sometimes bro. it's like because like you know <laughs> the, the more I actually talk, I haven't even brought that up with my therapist yet. So I just, you know, so <laughs> I feel like this is just a thing that you just need to. Oh it's man, a, it, it's milestone to go in, in, and like uh, the good ending of that story would be like, and then he matured and ended up finding someone, but that didn't even happen. So that's you? Like, no, it's like, it's just like <laughs> I went on. I went on to have you uh, went on to do stuff, date? and I just went on to go to college. I didn't go to college. You didn't go to college. I did failed you? at that miserably. You can tell by the yeah. podcast that we're doing for my yeah, show in my house at twenty. I bet you're regretting going to not going to college right now, huh, Cousin buddy? Dare you're supposed to be successful, uh, and you're out here just scrounging. Now all imagine if you would have had a college degree right you now. How much further so ahead much you'd be? More. You know, you're right behind now. all of your friends scrounging for a job with their college degrees, looking and applying, and not getting nothing, and living at home with their parents and being real miserable. You could be like them. You could be like them, bro. You could be like me, bro. <laughs> you could imagine. I honestly still felt really insecure about it right up. Until you guys started graduating, like up until May, really, and then they all started graduating. I'm like, yo, y'all are a bunch of fuck ups. <laughs> like, you guys going to school was such a mistake. Holy I mean, shit, I'm fine. And then we had, we had Nathan decide he like might have not done the job that he'd been do- like 
studying for and then he ended up doing it but for a little portion of time he wasn't gonna do it and i'm like yeah i'll fucking hmm and we had I know, I, you friends, know. uh trent moved to oklahoma but in between that yeah. like, trent didn't have a job he didn't know what he was looking for and like all this stuff and it was like very bleak for a while now he's got, i think he's got a good gig i haven't I mean, he got like long. a good like even though like you weren't doing this tiktok stuff uh like like years ago like you got a good like year and a half head start career wise like yeah. in, terms of, in terms of building your actual like building your wealth and building your brand and everything like that so that is fair that is fair see i don't feel as insecure about it <clears throat> i think it was a big thing with my parents too growing up where it was just like you don't have job title you're not good oh damn that's that's too asian well, they sound like that bro they, bro, sound, get... they sound like a eddie, eddie wong's mom <laughs> from fresh off the boat <laughs> yeah dude, <laughs> can we talk about fresh off the boat for a second oh no because Fresh Off the Boat's an amazing show. Okay. Like it's not. Okay. Uh, it's, it has a show that was, the premise is good. Randall Park is amazing. Constant Wu is a household treasure and she's a wonderful actress. And I like the kid who plays Eddie Wong. Um, I don't know what his name is, the actor, but he's great. That show, however, um, basically the entire show sums up this. And Constant Wu is a wonderful actor. Watch her in Crazy Rich Asians. What a performance. Anything else And she's in. beautiful and Randall Park is beautiful too. He I'd watch him in anything that he does. Beautiful man. Because and and that's where they give him like a perfect American accent. Because I mean he's Randall Park. Yeah. So he like doesn't he just like he owns he's an Asian man uh, who owns a American style Southern kitchen food <laughs> restaurant in Orlando. Yeah. But uh, Constant Wu, this is her. <clears throat> the entire show is. Uh, it's about her being an Asian parent and being a strict Asian parent and her son wanting to like Eddie Wong's like a very famous chef. Yeah. Um, so it's it's his life except he doesn't like the show. Uh, <laughs> so it's about him and like he likes rap music and stuff. And this, it takes place in like the early '80s and '90s, whatever. And she's just, like the whole show is, Eddie, why you not study? You need to study, f- Eddie. You need to be studying. He's like, Mom, I don't want to study. I want to listen to rap music. <laughs> Eddie, rap gets you nowhere. You do not do nothing with no rap. But Mom, it's about having fun. Eddie, you not have fun. And then you know Randall Park's like, Look, Eddie wants to have fun. And he wants important. to blend in with his friends. He Look, wants to be an American you know, boy. It's different. It's not the way it was when we grew up here. He's not, you know, pushing away his culture. He's trying to find his new culture. And he still loves who we are and what we are. Oh, I think you have a good idea. Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> it got, it got worse so and worse as <laughs> you kept on doing it. <laughs> I got more accurate. <laughs> False. No, I'll play you. I'll play you close to that show. Because Katsu has a perfect American accent. She does. I've heard it. So, uh... Yeah, and then and then you know, Eddie, I'm sorry. You have ten minutes with your friend. You come study. Like she learns ten her lesson, right? Your no, like, she learns her lesson, and then the next episode starts, and it's just mm. Eddie. Why <laughs> you not study? You want to eat food and have fun and see people. You have girlfriend. The why one, is she not Chinese? The one funny. Like, I was gonna bring that episode up. Like the one funny episode. Like the, at least a funny clip is like when the, there's like a Chinese girl. And she's coming over and she's pretending to be Eddie's girlfriend. Oh my god! And she takes off her shoes at the at the front door, and then Eddie's mom starts crying. Cause the, cause I have like, a story. That actress who plays the Chinese girl. Oh. Commented mean things on my TikToks. What? I'm not even shitting you. Mean? Yeah. Uh, I think I just showed up on her for you page, and she's uh, and I don't remember what I was making at the time. It was before the puppet content it's mm. 2019 tiktok and uh she left she left some kind of hate comment or something like some kind of cringe comment whatever and i made a video replying to it and it, w- it was like in funny i was like oh my god it's the girl fresh off the boat i literally used the picture of her holding the basket of oranges oh. and she came <laughs> giving gifts um but uh yeah no she i don't remember what, i don't know what the actress name is i hope she's doing great yeah. it was just a mean comment at the time but hey different strokes different folks my yeah. style of humor is not for everybody but uh <laughs> the whole asian accent thing yeah, like it, like fresh off the boat and like blackish. They're all kind of like they're shows that they seem to be like, oh, this is finally sh- a show for black people or a, a show for Asian people or a show for POC in general. But they're actually just shows for white people to like do like a, a whitewash ex- explanation of all the cultures that they That's weren't. That's what you think. Fresh off the boat meant a lot to me. Oh, did they? Know? Fresh off the boat spinoff, which is about, uh, and I don't think it ended up getting pilot, but they had a backdoor pilot in an episode and I watched it. It's about an Indian family who owns a motel. I'm not even kidding you, dude. I'm not fucking with you. Uh, what's, and, it, uh, what's it called? Dude, I don't remember what it was called. I don't think it, it I think it literally like had the one episode and then didn't get made. Remember that show uh <laughs> the by the the guys that did um that did the the, the season four of community? The 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 one with the alien guy? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't remember what the fuck it was called. <laughs> like it was like alien or something like that, but it was like it was some it was like a like a Pakistani boy. Yeah. He was moving in with a white family. And oh, uh, it was just the cringiest thing. I didn't, I didn't actually watch the show. I, I watched the trailer though. And it was it's <laughs> so like, Crazy Rich Asians, Shang Chi. 
that's about all we've gotten in society at this yeah, point. Yeah, you are doing um, well. <laughs> we're doing well. We're doing, doing better well, than what we're doing. <laughs> um, people will bring up Slumdog Millionaire. I will bring down Slumdog Millionaire. Um, well, that was like back in 2011. That's like all the we did that song. And so you weren't okay. I, but in sixth grade, we did okay, that song for spring. Okay. For spring show, we did we did the Jai Ho, and we were like. So the joke there with that is no that one, I was in show choir seventh grade forward, and I was friends with all these was people making. I was around during this time period, but I wasn't in show choir. So they will often bring up, bro, show choir was awesome, and they'll only talk about sixth grade. We went to Disney World. That is World. not true. Jake Crump was that in is it. not because like all the <laughs> the weirdest stuff happened in sixth grade. We had weird shit too. We did have we did of course we did. We had a lot of weird shit. Of course shit. we did. <laughs> It was just you know, it was just a transition period. Anyway, mm-hmm. back to the point. What was I even saying? I don't even remember this one. Uh, Jai Ho. Jai Ho. Yeah, we did that song, and like everyone was doing that song back in the day for some reason. Like it, it was a really big movie, huge movie, huge blockbuster. I guess thing. so. That guy, uh, that actor, and it's great. I don't remember what his name is. He went on to play Zuko in Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, 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 not, yeah, yeah. That performance is not good, but he's good in everything. He he ended up doing smaller movies. Um, yeah, and he's. He's so handsome. What is his name? He's a handsome dude. Dude, so handsome. And and brown people don't get enough credit. Well, also, the the dude the dude that's in the Green Knight. I don't know, I've never seen that. Oh, well, he, it's a it's a it's a brown guy as well. We are there are many of us. We're not yes, all. The people were really mad about it. They were like, "Oh no, this is, a, this is a, I didn't I don't remember King Arthur be, being Pakistani." It was, it really, you know, oh, by the way, British people are really racist. British people are super racist. That's besides the point. Um, so in the interest of famous people that are brown. Um, do you have Aziz Ansari? Okay. He's just he's just okay at every single thing that he does except playing really typecasted roles. Uh, his show Master of None is incredible. He hasn't done a, like the third season of that. They took him out of the show. So I don't know what behind the door things are happening, but that show sucked in its third season and it was really cinematic and really well done. But every character he plays, oh God, I'm Aziz Ansari. <laughs> Leave me. Oh my God. <laughs> like, like That's his whole bit. Uh, and then there's Hassan Minaj. Great. Yes. Maybe has... <clears throat> I think Hasan Minhaj, fundamentally, is so talented and well researched, okay. and uh, he has a very specific personality. I think he uh, comes off as a pompous douche. He does. Yeah, he does. But I like his stuff anyway. No, I appreciate what he does. I also don't think he's like. You can't put Hasan Minhaj in this format and expect him to be funny. Which one? Like this the, format. This, oh, like, yeah, no, like, this like one? podcast. Hmm. Like, tell him, hey, use none of your material. Go stand up on stage and do stand up right now. And he will just be a lost puppy on stage, in my opinion. I mean, every every stand up person has to have like some kind of material like backup. I, though. I mean, not bad, but we're talking like his, his are really well, like incredibly well crafted jokes. Mm-hmm. They're crafted. Yeah, like, he has to write me, them down. And, and my stand up is different than most people's. I'm, I'm, I'm very much an improv stand up comedian. Mm-hmm. I may have like three or four lines that I've said that I really, really like that I will go back to. But how I get to those lines is just like, I just go with it. I just go mm. with the flow of the conversation. Um, I don't think Hasan Minhaj is that. I think that everything that I've seen of him is very well choreographed. It's really well like, hey, I need to be here. Like and when you talk about, yeah, you know, and then I had my brown queen and then mm. her husband, Rajesh, Rendiganda, bon- like, like that whole, that bit was incredible. <laughs> he's so funny. He's so talented. Indian as far. Yeah. Yes, remember that uh, he's incredible, but I think it's just well-crafted jokes for him. And I don't think he's off the cuff as funny. Great guy. And uh, unrelated to the two of them, ha- Hassan Piker. Hassan Abi, the streamer right now, the political streamer. People love him. He's incredibly handsome. You, mm-hmm. you know him. You've heard yes, of him. Yes, I've heard of him. His name's Hassan. There is no such thing as a Hassan. If someone told you, it's okay. No, so no, no. in in his comment section, people call him uh, Azan. So I'm thinking maybe like that was his name. Azan is a whole. Azan is a. I, I know. I know what it is. Rare. But like they, they, that's what they call him. Like they name. They, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Hassan is not real. And Hassan Minaj, he had 10 minutes on Ellen. And mm-hmm. during the 10 minutes, he's like, I have a thousand things to talk about. But Ellen, my name's actually pronounced Hassan. And his dad was upset about it. His uh, dad was mad that. about it. He goes, you have minutes on Ellen and this is what you choose to do. With your, like, like <laughs> they, And he's like, yeah, that's what I choose. And he made strides for my people. People started calling me Hassan. For a little bit. We had a window. Hassan was coming out. And then Hassan Abi over here with his fucking <laughs> political takes that I completely agree with. Well, most of the time. Most um, of the time. Sometimes he's just very angry for no reason, I think. Uh, his, he just has the most toxic relationship with his chat yeah. all the time, hopefully. He's yeah. like, 
uh oh <laughs> what, what did someone in the chat someone said you know uh oh wow his political takes make you want to fuck uh makes me want to fuck you I said no it's not my fucking political take you want to fuck me because i'm six one and i blah whatever and he, like <laughs> this weird rant. and then like people would sis that video on tiktok and they'd just be like like girls spilling mouth out of their wa- like water out of their mouth and they're like, like mouth out of their mouth daddy listening <laughs> mouth out of the, the amount of people that have called him daddy but look like He's handsome. My friend Molly. Molly Russo, great comedian, great TikToker, uh, and uh, she literally said she would give her entire life to just meet Hassan Abi. And t- Hassan, sorry. Hassan Abi. <gasps> but maybe that's how, that's how no, they pronounce it just, in Turkey. He has such... No. The pronunciations are Hassan, Arabic. Mm-hmm. Hassan, Pakistani, Urdu, Desi. Eng- it, whatever, Desi more. But it's, it's, it's more or less Hassan, American. That's about it. That's about fucking it. My real name is Hassan. I go by Hassan. That is my own choice. I do articulate that every time I tell people what my name is. And I go by Hassan. Uh, my name legally changed in the fifth grade. So I was actually not born Hassan Kader. And I'll never tell you guys what I was actually born. Oh, I'm about to say it, bro. little secret. No, no. I've revealed enough to this fucking <laughs> toxic ass <laughs> audience on this episode of the Bad Days Podcast. Oh. But no. Um, so, yeah. I, and I have a couple of Arabic friends that call me Hassan. But they're all real pronunciations. Hassan. No one fucking named their kids Hassan. Hassan? That's the ugliest shit I ever heard. Yo, if someone's kid's name Hassan, get in the goddamn chat. Like, hey, I'll, I'll write you a hey, real... Hey, what's your name, buddy? Oh, my, my, my name's Hassan. Oh, nice to meet you, Hassan. Yeah. That's how it is. Have you heard? You've seen that. You've listened <laughs> to that happen to me. Multiple times Bro, in real time. Oh, as if, like, did they think that I misspoke? <laughs> like, Bro, that's like... It's not even like, that much easier to pronounce. Hey, it's just my different. name's Isaiah. It's just hey, worse. Hazal. That that has, that has happened to me a thousand Azal? years. People don't know how to pronounce And my name's actually in the Bible, so it doesn't make no sense, but... It's like, like, uh, like, uh, hey, Connor's like, what's the equivalent for me? That's like, hey, my name's Connor. Hey, Conor. <laughs> hey, Conier. 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 Bro. Mjolnir. Fucking. Sorry, guys. I got so mad. <laughs> <laughs> bro, don't, don't Hussin, mispronounce Hassan's name. Fucking Hassan Abi, bro. Man up. You are such a, a man's man over here. Like, look at me. I'm fucking hot. I'm six one. Everybody wants me. Tell people how to pronounce the name. Go by your actual name. Fucking please. help me out, okay? <laughs> I'm so tired of like... It's like my number one fans get to talk to me and they're like, oh my God, Hassan. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I leave the chat. Like people <laughs> on the Discord are so excited to meet me and I'm like, oh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm so excited. And they call me Hassan. And I just get in a bad mood. You need to have like a like a, like parentheses by your name. Like, uh, my name's Hassan. Dude, that's what my... Hassan. TikTok, that's exactly what my TikTok bio was for like the longest time. But you, now you I need should. things in there for business stuff. Yeah. So... um. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I just got on a whole soapbox there. <sighs> He's very unhappy about the, the status of Hassans in the world. You need to know um, how to pronounce the man's name. So, cringy stories is that are not that cringy because I was a child, like I'm like, talking like a five-year-old, mm. but that like physically make me sick to this day. I went to PCB, uh, Panama City Beach with my aunt and uncle, and uh, we were staying at a really nice hotel, and the balcony was facing towards the pool. We were on the bottom floor. And we walked out uh, to the bathroom. My uncle stayed in the hotel room. Me and my aunt walked out to the pool. And I turned around and there was just this old white man sitting in a chair. And I was like, hey, Abba, hello. Because I thought he was my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like laughing. No, no, no it's not, I'm not your uncle. Like, hey, Abba, it's you. And I like kept doing that. And then finally, I understood it wasn't my uncle anymore. Whatever. I get upset about that to this day. What? <laughs> like I think about that. The feeling of shame and embarrassment in that moment has never left my body. Yeah, he was calling me Abba. Yeah, no, he was oh, no, no, I'm not uh, your Abba. Abba means father. Or dad. Oh yes. Yeah. So I grew up calling my Abba. aunt and uncle Abba and Amma because they raised me for a fair portion of my childhood. My mama mm-hmm. was busy working. It's a working lady. Um, we talked about concepts. We talked about accents. I can't remember. What, I think we were talking about like expectations of parents in mm. college and degrees and stuff like that mm. um so my mom my mom spoke fluent english when i was a kid she married my stepdad and he is arab and over time his english is just not great he's been in america for the same amount as me you know 23 years he came in 98 uh but you know salman he from talks, bahrain he's from bahrain <laughs> not bahrain 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 yeah you're, you're kind of saying the k bahrain that's it. That's beautiful. That's perfect. That's a beautiful pronunciation of that. Um, my Arabia. But yeah, over time, my mom's English became broken. Hmm. <laughs> like, because of it or whatever. <laughs> so I can't even do a really good accent. I was going to want... Did you, like, when you were younger, did you have, like, an accent? Like, a no. thick accent? No. 
No? I was bilingual, and mm. in, in my first language was not English, mm. but I was very capable of, like, bouncing between the two accents. Just picking up I did have, like, perfect of those accents, though. Mm. Like, I ha- I didn't have... There was no, like... You know, Americans learn Chinese, and it's like, Nishi, Shai Shi, Pali Lada. Shen Ma Ming Zhe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I had, like, a perfect accent to everything that I spoke, but... No, I never had I never had a severe um, accent. There was times where I think I, I maybe for, like, a day... Like, like, like you almost speak... Um, so I, in my household growing up, uh, I spoke Urdu and Hindi and Burmese. I didn't really speak much Burmese, but Urdu and Hindi. Uh, so there are times where they do like an Urdu version of Hindi where like they'll talk and they'll go back and forth between Urdu and English and Hindi. Just, just I thought they were the same thing, basically. They are. Urdu and Hindi. They are kind of. I know that like, there's, there's like, like different there's words. There's several words that are there's, different, there's but it, more like in my brain, it's all one language. To, right? But yeah, uh, so it, they would interchangeably switch between Urdu and English. Hmm. Um, so sometimes I would like talk like that. Hmm. I did in, in preschool, so I don't know if you remember it. But that's like the, a lot of the uh, folks I've talked to have, who have uh, parents from another country. They just like they're, they're that's basically what they did. What yeah. they did, they have like they also they like make up words. Yeah. Bro. Okay. We gotta talk about. We're talking. This is the, this is the embarrassing. And people, episode. by the way, like in the in the chat last night, they're really liking the the, the Hindi or the that you were speaking. Did they really? Yeah. They, I, I saw it like multiple times. Like, oh, then they had like hearts. So. Oh damn! Hey, should speak it more. I won't do it more often. No. <laughs> bro, I'm so I'm not Indian and I'm not Pakistani. Give it a fucking He's rest. Like, are, are you are you Pakistani, bro? And then no, I'm not. Are you Muslim? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> but are you Muslim? No. But well, you're like you're like Muslim, I have a question right? though. Are you Muslim? No. Uh, <laughs> it's most. Uh, it was the most exhausting thing in my life. But um, I, had to, I had to ban multiple people. Good, do it. Were you muting them for 24 hours or you banning them? No, it was like, like YouTube is weird because like if you like tell someone to time out, it'll like they'll time out. Then you like can't do it again. Or it was it's some weird shit that was happening last night. Very weird. But <clears throat> I was talking about, what was I just talking about? Accents? Yeah. Pakistani, you're, Indian. You're, you're not uh, that. You're an American I don't have, boy. I don't have an accent, uh, but I don't know what my I don't know how to do my mom's accent because it is just broken English. It's very specific. So sometimes my, you'll like have words that are like clear, like no accent, but like other times it's like it's like really thick. And I just consistent. remember both things I want to talk about. So yeah, uh, in in back in the conversation of like success mm-hmm. and why college is so important. Just remember the conversation of like, and I'll do my dad's accent, even though he probably wasn't the only person saying this the most, of like. You know, you do not have college degree. You you do, you have nothing. You know, you don't make money. You don't have good family. You have nothing in this world. You do not have this. Nothing. I'm like, well, my friend's a YouTuber. He makes $4 million. He's $4 million, but who is he? He's fucking rich. And he's <laughs> one of the more famous people on the planet right now. But he's no doctor. He's no scientist. He's not special. It's like nothing. He doesn't he's get just through man. Their, he's their just heads. man. He's no college. No nothing in this world. You have nothing. You know this, Isaiah? You have nothing in this world. You don't have a skill, bro. <laughs> you don't have, a, yeah. That's um, the that's the that, that, that's like the older older people mentality. Is like you have to get a degree, you have to get like a marketable skill, like a license, because uh, like you know, I I, you know, I, I, I sympathize with it I to don't. a certain extent because like, on one hand, like in their mind, it's like these like the YouTube thing can come and go, and so he's not gonna have anything to fall back on. Like I, you know, that, that, I think that's what he meant, but he couldn't say it. And <laughs> but you bro, know, bro, and and the thing was, but like, like it's not bro, cool. To, you should support sister, your children. It was bro. my sister's birthday yesterday, mm-hmm. and uh, let's talk about optometry. Wait, let me finish the. Let's let's do let's, cringe. Let's stick on one thing. We're gonna first. do the cringy stories thing yes. that I just remembered. Then we're gonna do sister optometry school, and okay. it'll weave back in this narrative. So the cringy stories. Okay. Um, I apologize for the scatterbrain nature of this podcast. <laughs> I've actually yeah, we're filming this so much more late than we usually are. Too. Yeah, we're a little bit more tired. Also, we need to eat at some point. Yeah, too. I'm a little hungry. Um, now. So, uh, cringy things that because we spoke different languages in our house, where words did not translate properly. Mm-hmm. So, I grew up calling pajamas night suits. <laughs> I remember you told me about this. So, it'd be pajama day, and I would like, you know, I'm like in elementary school, I wear my PJs, I'm rocking it, and be like, you know, Alex, why aren't you wearing a night suit? <laughs> night night suit. This is why you like night suit. What the fuck so is much. a night suit? It is because you thought you thought I was wearing a night suit. Bro, he thought it was shit like that was so prominent. It's also like old world superstition that just I thought was real. You can't tell your dreams. In the kitchen, because then they come true. I never heard that one before. Bro, that was one that was like aggressive. And my folks are superstitious, really, especially my grandpa. But I never heard that one before. Like, you can't drink orange juice at night because it will kill you. Oh it's, yeah, it actually becomes poisonous. You 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 told me about this one. Bro, my was my mom. Look, my mom's not in my life. I don't really give a fuck about this her or the situation anymore. 
She's a fucking grown ass woman. She still believes that. Well, she the, the she lives in the this world that we all live in, and she doesn't drink orange juice at night because she thinks it'll be poisonous. Well, she's talking about the sand as well. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> bro! My fucking grandma. Uh. <laughs> my grandma, like she's uh. super religious, and like, like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. Yes, I'm not Muslim, but I respect Islam. You bunch of scumbags. Like, <gasps> he must be one of the Muslim man. Like oh, I will know it to be true. Yeah. Zen. Oh wow! No, guys, I just respect Yalla other people, habibi. Um, and I have a lot of love for it. But my grandma, bro, she definitely got fucking conned. Uh, growing up, <laughs> growing up, she has like Tupperwares full of sand, dirt, and rocks in her closet. And what the claim is, here are places where the Prophet Muhammad stepped, like his foot touched this dirt. Yes. So good old Saudi sand. She would fucking put. Dirt in my mouth. <laughs> she'd be like, 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 she'd be like, "Hey, it's a real special moment." Stick your tongue out and then put her finger in the, in the dirt and then put the the dirt in on my tongue. Sometimes she would put it in my food. Zum zum sand. <laughs> it's not zum zum sand. Zum zum is like uh, it's like a I remember I, I saw water. that I saw that bottle. Uh, it's like it's like palm in your basement. Yeah. It was, it was like what the what is what is zam zam water? Zum zum bani. Zum zum water. Uh, it's it's holy water. But yeah, no, dead ass, bro. I ate like a lot of dirt growing up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I grew up. I grew up like regularly eating sand. Yeah, bro. Um, Got the. I don't know. I don't want to say anything. Bro, else about <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say it. I don't want to say anything. There are anything. words I can't say. There are things you uh, can't say, Isaiah. Bro, but, but like like sand shifts. It's not the same sand as it was. But the fourteen hundred years ago, the prophet stepped on it. I don't know. I'm not going to speak to the validity of her stand. It's not real. But my no, grandma, bro, real. <laughs> let's let's talk about my grandma and then we'll get to Sana because I just the things that she believed, they're insane. They don't make any sense. They're not real. So Islam, really, like the 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 media wants to tell you, it's this really like fucked up back world religion that hates people and that abuses women. <laughs> it's not. It's an incredibly empowering religion to women. It has a lot of uh, intricacies and it's it's it's, it's very scientifically based. A oh lot of yeah, the then why was the prophet's wife nine years old, huh? So you know, and the the narrative with that is I don't fucking know, <laughs> man. I don't think she was like I, I think it's <laughs> like mistranslation, man. I don't fucking know. how I've heard of it. It's like they they married, but there's not like I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm not going to speak to that stuff because, and, and honestly, I'm not speaking to it not because I think it's like, oh, well, this is, I'm not going to talk about it because I don't know any, I don't know what the answer is, but I know there is an answer. I'm just not Muslim yes. anymore, so I'm not, I'm not going to say you read it, but here's, here's some stories. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his soul, he uh, had a daughter, a daughter whom he loved very much. He raised very closely because that's how you raise children. And he's supposed to be like the pinnacle of a man. Like he's incredible. He's an incredible leader, religious man, worker, all these things, soldier, warrior. I don't know. He's a great guy. Fantastic. Peace be upon his soul. And uh, <laughs> don't laugh. You're the one that... Okay, okay. okay, okay. I'm going to say it. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. Don't laugh. Peace to him. Salam. Okay, yeah. Assalamu salamu alaykum. Assalamu salamu alaykum. Okay. Um, so Prophet Muhammad uh, raised his daughter and um, eventually his daughter married uh, a man named Imam Ali who went on to become one of the greatest caliphs of the time. And he was... Um, I think they were like second or third cousins, which that's, you know, you deal with that however you will. They mm-hmm. were related in some ways, but he married his daughter and he was this incredible man who like was a well-off leader, was really good, was all of these things. And his first wife proposed to him. Yeah, well. his first wife, Khadija, I believe, mm-hmm. she was like one of the greatest merchants of the time yeah. and she proposed to him. So all Over these narratives like, women in Islam, you know you gotta wear a do-rag on your head everywhere you go. <laughs> do-rag? <laughs> <laughs> you need to wear a do-rag from the top of your head to the tip it of your toes. It is pronounced a do-rag. <laughs> wear a durag. It's pronounced durag. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Fuck me. Look, it. Um. So, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of stereotypes about Muslim, and it, my my biggest thing is my sister is a woman who has so much self respect, and I left Islam because of my own personal reasons. She stayed, and if she's staying, there's a reason to stay, and she's such a, a feminist, not in an SJW kind of way, but like in a SJW. SJW. Oh, no. Feminism. I love when they're Feminist wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> Compilation 2016. Sorry. Curly Daddy 69 on TikTok. <laughs> Get wrecked, feminist. That guy's so weird. But um, so my sister uh, stayed in it, so I think there's some validity to it. And she's more researched. She's more invested in the religion than I am. But yeah, Prophet Muhammad's first wife married her. So um, 
you know, he had, you know, the, the, the proposal or whatever, but he picked a really good person to marry his daughter or his daughter picked this person too, mm-hmm. right? This is how my grandma tells me a story. She goes, so very long. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it in Urdu. You can still do it. I'm not going to understand. Beta idrao, come, be- <laughs> come sit down. I mean, son, come here. I'm not going to fucking translate back and forth. Um, cool. So she basically told me and my sister this story that, like, you know, the prophet's just walking around. They have a pretty big house. He's just strolling. Uh, and one day he sees this woman in his house. He's like, Oh my God, who is this? And the servant's like, that's your daughter. Whoa. She's gotten so old. We need to get her married now. This is insane. <laughs> so don't laugh. This is religion. Okay. My grandma <laughs> believes this. My grandma's going to die believing this. So she prayed to Allah. Asawajal, okay. Prayed to Allah. Allah, please, 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 please. God, you know, I trust in your wisdom. My wife is ready, or my wife, my daughter is ready to be married. The next person who knocks on my door will I've marry heard this my story daughter. Before. The next person who knocks on this door will marry my daughter, no matter who it is, because mm. I trust in your infinite magic and wisdom. I say magic, but whatever. So, knock on the door. <coughs> Opens the door. It's a fucking lion. <laughs> hey, oh my God, you told me this. <laughs> it's a real lion. And then he's like, well, God is great. So he marries his daughter to a lion. And then at the altar, boom, the lion turns back into a mom. Ali turns out Ali was the lion the whole time. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Truly beautiful, blessed day. Uh, So, no, (laughs) I believe that growing up, dude. That the prophet, she's like this fucking like, I don't know who my kids are. I don't know them. Like he's supposed to be like the blueprint of like a great man. Um, And, uh, you know. (laughs) You need to put your mic up to the mouth when you're I'm laughing. Sorry, Robert. I can't. I can't. I, but what? What am I gonna do? This is this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life, bro. So, what really the, the translation yeah. is? You know, Imam Ali was a warrior, and he like led wars, and that, like a big part of the Ottoman Empire, all this stuff, whatever. He was considered the lion of the battlefield for his bravery and for his heart. It was like a title given to him. So my grandma, <laughs> I don't know how the fuck it got so lost in translation. He's a literal lion, bro. Bro, bro they would teach. Like, I learned Arabic as a mm-hmm. kid. And you said to read it? Bro, I learned Urdu Arabic. Like, yeah, I learned how to read it. Like, letters, they changed phonetic sounds altogether. It'd be like, the, the sound tha mm-hmm. would be za. Adhan, azan. Zum, zum, pan. I don't think it's thum, thum. I don't know what fucking... I don't, I think that's, that's thum, thum thing. from Spike Kid. But it was like the, the Arabic guy was alif, ba, ta, sa, jim, ha, ha, dal, zal, hamza. Yeah, I'm not going to fucking do the whole alphabet. But they were all mispronunciations. And my grandma was teaching, I should you she taught Quran lessons. There are multiple Muslims in this community that grew up here in Hoover. My mm. grandmother taught them Arabic and she taught them how to read the Quran. I mean, well, like people in different places pronounce things differently. Wrong. It was though. all wrong, bro. And she used to like. But I heard that was like a thing where like, you know, Arabic Muslims will look down on like Desi Muslims for not pronouncing this uh, stuff they correctly. They look down on Desi Muslims for abundance of reasons. And, uh, and honestly, it's not, it's not Muslim people. It's. Arabs and Desi people and all these people—they have like black very. People. Everyone hates black people. Everyone has a specific prejudices to each other, and I don't want to even get into that because I'm developing them. I'm kidding. Because <laughs> I'm racist now too. I'm brown racist. people. Uh, but yeah, my grandmother had some like insane beliefs. It has to this day, and like you know, their their favorite narrative. Like like, there's a lot of drama going on in my family right now. My mom's a super villain, and families have really just taken up her side on this. And I don't feel like talking about the logistics, all that. It's just like if you heard the facts, my mom's the bad guy. Like there's no question about it. But they're all kind of supporting her. My aunt would be like, "One day you'll know. One day we'll tell you everything. You'll get older and you'll understand." I just think y'all are racist, though. <laughs> like, they, 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 that's what they always say. Whenever they want to say something stupid and like don't have, know how to defend it, they're like, you'll understand one day well, when, you're, when you've conditioned, when you've been conditioned to be racist like we are. Uh, 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 Connor's texting me. Oh. Uh, I'm going to say, we film in 30 film men left. The podcast. In the podcast. Our... Uh, in the point podcast. Sorry, guys, for the interruption. I could cut that because I'm an editor, but I won't cut that because Lo I'm a lazy siento. man at first. Um, but yeah, lots of weird things like that. Let's get into miserable existences because of brown parent expectations. Okay. So, I'm a failure, if you can't tell, in the eyes of my parents, or my, my mom at least. Um, because, you know, when I, when I was growing up, I really wanted to be a paleontologist. Hmm. What that means is I was a kid who liked fucking dinosaurs because they were cool. Like, this isn't, I don't want to fucking dig up shit and write research papers for the rest of my life and be like, 
this bone looks like a brontosaurus. And then make two dollars. Yo, for literally paper. make nothing for the rest of my life. Um, like uh, I don't at all. Um, wait, what the heck? Did famous impressionist Brock Baker uh, sent me a voice message? I believe he did. Um, mm. But that's so interesting. Brock Baker, he's one of the oldest, most old school YouTube impressionists of all time. Oh. He's incredible. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm a failure in their eyes for an abundant uh, list of reasons. And uh, that's... I'm stuttering. Guys, I'm going to collect myself. I, I So here's a big reason why. I have ADHD. I'm going to leave all this in here because this is what happened. Could you believe it? Could you so, believe it, folks? I we did not have, have great grades in early elementary. I was pretty smart in kindergarten. You know, I was pretty good at coloring. You know how to. Actually, Heck I was yes, very bro. bad at coloring. I was good at everything else. Oh. I, I had I knew my ABCs pretty well because I also knew my lift and oh. my... <laughs> got, it, got learning straight, folks. Bro, I learned like fucking five languages by the time I was six, so leave me alone. But hey. whatever. Uh... In fifth grade, I got a tutor. Hmm. Uh, her name is Miss Powell. I don't know what she's up to these days, but incredible woman. Mm-hmm. Incredible because my actual teacher uh, was just one of the worst teachers ever. She's gone on to be a principal at several schools. Just a terrible woman, top to bottom. Racial biases was known, had her favorites, did not like me, but I struggled a lot. And my tutor was super helpful, and I got like all A's by the end of by the end of fifth grade. I was killing it. Hmm. And then into sixth grade, I'd like still have those study habits. So I was doing really well, but they were slowly fading over time. Mm. Sixth grade, I think I got like the highest GPA, whatever. Like, you know, they gave you an award. It's like, had awards day. Fucking stupid, bro. Whatever. Um, I got the highest GPA award. And um, into seventh grade, I started doing stuff. I did choir. I was doing show choir and all that stuff. So I was getting worse grades. I was still getting like A's and B's because I'm not a dumb kid. We weren't getting like the highest possible grades that you could have gotten. I wasn't getting anything good anymore. And uh, at that point, I think I still wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be an oncologist. I wanted to be a cancer surgeon because my mom had lost a really good friend. Uh, her name is Wilsey Hayes, and she was a tremendous woman, and I like like loved her growing up. She was awesome, and she passed away because of breast cancer, and she mm. beat cancer three times in her life mm. and died the last time, but she lived a really long, beautiful life. Wonderful woman, so I wanted to become an oncologist. So that had been, that'd been the goal for a while. Uh, my grades were slipping. The, my parents' opinion of me was slipping because my grades were slipping, but I was just getting happier. I was getting my own personality. I was getting a social life. I was catfishing women on Tinder. Um, <laughs> you know, I was just doing it all. Full circle. Uh, and that uh, that time period continued onwards up until about freshman, sophomore year of high school when I watched Grey's Anatomy because I really liked this girl. All she would talk about was Grey's Anatomy, so I watched 11 seasons of one show in two months. <laughs> the time of that doesn't make sense. There weren't enough hours How for me to simply do that. You're just watching Grey's Anatomy all day, Basically, all night. and I did that, and I watched it, and we had lots to talk about. And she did like me for a tiny span of time, of which I was completely uninterested in her because my ex-girlfriend had just dumped me, and I was in love with my ex-girlfriend. So, big fucking idiot. <sighs> big, I fumbled Swing the bag on that one. Swing and uh, a miss. I fumbled the bag on that one, but... Besides the point, I was done being an oncologist. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I think I wanted to do something. I want to do social media marketing because mm. I still like content creation. I still like being an entertainer. I still like YouTube. I still like all these things. But I was like, I'm not cut out to be an entertainer, whatever. My parents' expectations of me at that point, I'd let them down so much. They just didn't give a fuck what I did. Mm. Then there was my sister. <laughs> now, Sana didn't have old ADHD. So she was very diligent at her studies. Very diligent. At, and she was good at it. Um and uh, she went on in high school to do this thing called the IB program, which is just like, hey, do you have a kid potentially with a social disorder and who uh, definitely needs to be around other kids to like, you know, make friends and mm-hmm. to have a good life and not be stressed out? Well, I have an alternative to you. It's the IB program. It's going to make them <laughs> that. <laughs> if they're that, you can we'll make them more than that. If they're normal, that. you can fucking kill them. Normal. Uh, IB well. program's terrible. It's useless. It gets you, uh, it makes IB leagues look at you more, except, no, they don't. They don't give a fuck. IB program is just to make kids miserable. It's stupid. It's run by narcissistic assholes. Um, some, some really good teachers in between, but a lot of not. So she did the IB program. She was on, like, my mom really wanted her to be the doctor. So Sana, who is squeamish, should be a cardiologist. So, uh, and, and my mom uh, my mom was really smart growing up. She graduated, like graduated two years early, but she couldn't get scholarships because she didn't have a proper citizenship at the time. Mm. And a bunch of things happened. That's how she got shoehorned into her first marriage that was born me and my sister because um, uh, the biological father promised to pay for her college. Very messed up situation. Old world bullshit, whatever. Besides the point, she did not go to college. He was not a good dude. Has two kids now. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, forces his expectation. My mom wanted to be a doctor. My sister should be a doctor. Forces this expectation on my sister. My sister goes to college. Doesn't even get to go to college of her choice. Goes to the one that's slightly cheaper, further away. Instead of going to Auburn, she went to UAH. Was a chemistry major. She actually liked chemistry. <clears throat> she loves research. <laughs> 
she uh, loves research. She loves studying and learning. IB actually did like show her that she has like a passion for knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, by the time she graduated, she opted to do optometry because it wasn't surgical, but it was still a doctor, still do that field. Bro, I went to her white coat ceremony, which is a big deal for doctors. Like, it's a big, big, huge deal. And uh, my mom was not there for that because she was busy doing fuck shit in another country being an asshole. Fuck my mom. Uh, wow, that's not cool for me to say, <laughs> but you know what? I'm not happy about it, but uh, my... It wasn't uh, cool for her to not do it. Well, is she going to listen to my podcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're listening right now, huh? She has no idea I'm famous. She has to have no concept of how famous I am as far as... And I'm not famous in that regard in yeah, my but brain. You know, but doesn't I have, even, you know. Look, whatever. Besides the point, my <laughs> sister, she wasn't there for that. My sister has her white coat ceremony. And usually white coat ceremonies are these really beautiful things of like, we're doctors, we're signing this creed to protect others, and you have signed up for the most noble cause in the world. Blah, 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 blah. The white coat ceremony for optometrists are, <clears throat> you're going to spend the rest of your life advocating uh, you need to make friends with politicians. You can never publicly show your your political biases because you need to be friends with Republicans and Democrats and everybody under the sun because optometry has no rights. They went on to say a bunch of things about how optometrists are essentially like, there's no legislation for optometry. So, and it's like a different subsect of, of medicine. What does that mean? I don't know. There's a thousand things that go into it of basically like optometrists will have to fight for the rest of their lives to get funding, to get facilities, to get like just everything under the sun to treat patients and stuff like that. They're li- and this is like a big momentous occasion. And just like that's the life that you're signing up for. This. Where you're going to work forever. And when you're not working, you're working. When you're not working, you're networking to work at legislation and you're lobbying for... It was terrible. You should have told me at the get-go, buddy. Well, and they did her first semester. They mentioned that and she goes, they gave that speech again, which they gave that speech the first time. I thought that was to weed out the people, but no, they gave it again at the <laughs> white coat ceremony. So she's talking about like it yesterday. doubling down. About how just like, you know, how uh, upsetting the path she's on is and how overworked she is. And she worked... And I mean, IB is a very intensive program. She has been more overworked now than she's ever been in her entire life. Like it is one of the most obscene situations ever of all time and uh, that she's stuck and she's going to do this. And she says her dream right now, she's like when it's studying something she doesn't care about, such a miserable experience. She goes 10 hours of studying eyes. Oh God, kill me. 10 hours of studying linguistics and languages. Sign me up. That's like, like, like in history, sign me up. English, sign me up. And then she's stuck doing this because my parents' expectations of her. Mm-hmm. And she's lost out on a lot of her life. And now she's just staying the course, which sucks. Um, and I was like, hey, you know, if this YouTube thing and all these other things take off, hopefully I'll be making a pretty penny. I can probably pay for most of your stuff if you want to just like pursue passion. She's like, no, I'm finishing this and I'm going to pay for my student debt with optometry and whatever. And I'm just like, God damn. What I understand life. like, you know, if you feel like you've, you've gone the course this far, you'd feel like you're like kind of wasting your, you would have wasted all that time now. Because like, like at a certain point, like you wasted so much time that like going back on it would mean having to like actually acknowledge that. You've wasted well, so much she, time. She's acknowledged it. I, I don't know. I don't know what her, her adamancy is on it. And, and she's a very headstrong person. So uh, it's just sad. It's sad that they project what they want you to be. And that for me, I was such a failure that I got to project what I wanted to be. Mm. I want to spend the rest of my life being Mickey Mouse on the internet. No, no. I'm going to be a comedian <laughs> and I'll probably retire. Could you imagine if this thing is like is still happening 10 years down the road? You're still doing Mickey Mouse puppets? Dude. That'd be insane. That would be crazy. What if it still? What if it makes like crazy money? I mean, I, uh, what if it makes like a million dollars a week? That's fifty million dollars a year. That's, I mean, okay, a million dollars <laughs> a month. That's twelve million. Yeah, that's, that's feasible. Yeah, definitely. I probably wouldn't. I, I'm look. I have. I have. I just think you would have. You would like. Will have gotten burnt out. By I have five years left in me. Five years of working every day, mm. doing this stuff, and then I'd like to do this for the rest of my life. I want to go do stand up. I want to do podcasts. I mean, want to act, but I don't want to like. My mom and them, like the, their generation is a generation that has set up their lives because they want, they live to work. Mm-hmm. I work to live. I'm about doing work so that I can enjoy my life, enjoy my future wife and kids and my friends and, and not mm. sit there and think about the hours I spend in the office. I guess, you know, my parents were kind of very much the opposite where they very, they were very much like encouraging of like whatever we wanted to do. But I was just, you know, I've just been so confused for the longest time. And that, you know, now I'm starting to get my groove in, like I'm starting to you know, get into creative writing and like, you know, making comics and all that kind of stuff. But it, it just took me so long. And like now that I'm like, like the college thing is over, I'm like, why didn't, why wouldn't I doing this five years ago? I could have gotten, I could have been so much more ahead in all my passions. And that's a big thing that parents neglect to realize that 
you know, for me, I truly don't care what my kids do. What I like mm-hmm. for them to like, I want them to earn something for themselves, but not to like be like, hey, you, you're not going to have a life if you don't earn this, whatever your mm-hmm. expectations on you because you need to go out there in the world and not live off Pappy's money. It's just like, <laughs> you know, I want them to find their passion in life and feel free to do that. And if their passion is working a nine to five somewhere and being a businessman or a lawyer, awesome. But if their passion is something like me being creative, being funny, like making people happy, that's even better. Like mm-hmm. I love. And that. I also, you know, it's also important, especially for young folks. It, you know, you're not always going to be able to do the thing that you want to do. Sometimes you're already going to have to hunker down and like do the crappy thing. But, but do the crappy thing to get you to the good thing. Yeah. Like that, and, and that's it, like that's just, that should be the goal. Like you have to have a goal in mind because if you're not, if you're just going to be like, I'm, I'm doing this now. I have to eat. So I'm just going to do this for the rest of my life because it's stable. Then like there's no point in even like. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Existing at that point. I had a far more stable revenue doing real estate. And, you know, my my income chart, you've seen it. It's just this up and down and up and down mm. and up and down. But I don't care. This is what makes me happy. This is what makes people that I care about happy. So I'm going to keep doing this for now. And I'm going to pivot to things I like later and, and do more creative stuff that like I, I'm a writer. I'd like mm. to direct more stuff than I have. Mm. I'd like to, I, I, you know, I was thinking about some skit style contents that have nothing to do with Mickey. Mm. It's like roommate skits and things that I want to do for fun. Yeah, you'd be you know, good I love, doing that kind of I love content. Sugar Pine 7's alternative lifestyle whole thing. I thought that was incredible and I'd love to tap into that style of humor. But yeah, I'm doing what makes me happy and parents need to push more for that. Yeah. Living a happy life. Money does not buy happiness. Money certainly makes you more comfortable. Money certainly makes happiness more attainable, but not in not in like you work forever, you have a million in the bank account, you're smiling. Now you work a little bit. And also like nowadays, like if you have a hobby that you're into that could possibly be um like financially like beneficial, like if you like do like drawing for a hobby or you do anything that, that can be put on the internet. Wood like making. You, yeah, with like anything, you can put it on the internet and like people. make money like on the side still. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> Didn't know why you just said that. It's like I'm listening to things. I just keep listening to normal things, and then I'm like yeah. homicide. Yeah, the homicide. <laughs> Regicide. That's, that's my kings. homicide hustle. Oh, my homicide <laughs> hustle, bro. <laughs> but really, like you know, you need to be able to you know have hobbies because um because I feel like people think that life is a zero sum game, and for some people it is that you don't really have time, and whatever job you do takes everything out of you, but. For those of us that are more fortunate that are raised in like a middle class environment, like even if you're not going to be able to do your passion for a career, you need to be, like find some space in order to actually do it because you're going to go crazy otherwise. It's a really important thing to sit down and think about like, hey, you're going the course, right? You've heard accountants make good money when you were in 12th grade or not 11th grade. You're junior in high school. You heard that. You're in finance academy and you're like, I'm doing that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. This everything I do is towards that goal sit down and realize or and, and think about it is that going to make you happy and if it is going to make you happy to that job you can do it because you want to do other things what are the other things you want to do when you're off the clock mm. find passions I, you know i'm working on that in therapy like i have a lot of passions i've worked towards a lot of stuff this is this is a passion of mine i get to sit here and yeah. talk to people um but you know fundamentally find that you've been doing a good job of finding yourself with that sometimes parents give you a lot of runway too and mm-hmm. then you're like, fuck, why can't you just give me a set path? Because some people yeah, are Because, like, you know, my, my parents, you know, they were my, they, they were especially with my, I don't want to get, but, like, they are, their parents were very, like, old school, like, your parents are with them. Like, very much, like, you know, you're going to, you have to put some food on the table. Um, so you can't really do the archy stuff you want to do. Um, but nowadays, it's like, you know, especially that they were trying to, I don't know. It it just it. There's nothing that they did was wrong. It was just something about me as a person, or it, it, <laughs> something about me is wrong. No, nothing no. that they did wrong. My name is Isaiah Kendrick, and no. something's wrong <laughs> with me. This is me admitting it on camera. <laughs> Guys, the point being, inside of me. the point being, you know, dude, some folks just don't have the the set like passionate like this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my like my brother's really he's been good about that for like his whole life he's wanted to be a singer and he's like like slowly but surely been making strides to doing that and he like, that's like his goal that's his that's his vision you guys should go listen to stream hello darlin on yeah, Spotify. yes stream hello darlin small Kendrick. infinity hello darlin's one of my favorite songs of all time yes uh, it already has like a million streams but you do it some more you know? yeah do it so, give some more streams but yeah you know some people just have that that drive yeah, that and focus. i've just been finding that and you know especially with me like even when i'm trying to do like my passions it's like i have a terrible work-life balance because i'll be either like doing crap all day just to like do it or i'll just be doing nothing and there's no in between yeah um i've been trying to work on that with having like a therapist and having a schedule and stuff but it's just you know it's it's adulting and it's hard 
it's hard and it only gets harder and life is going to get more depressing and then one day you'll be in the dirt. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Do you remember Nihilistic Hussin? Uh, yes. So, um, we He'd talked about this in the older episodes, but this is a new Bad Days channel where the yeah. old episodes are still available to You'll stream. never find them. They're available on all streaming platforms, but on the YouTube channel, I decided that I was just going to leave them up on my main yeah, channel. If, if you've been watching them. all of them, just forget about them and only forget remember about the, it, okay? the past three episodes. It's over. These are the new episodes of the Bad Days podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually going to retell a bunch of those stories because a lot of that hinged on the anonymity of people I don't give a fuck about anymore or like... Not, I'm not going to expose them, but in like the regard of, oh man, I need to be careful what I say because they're in my life and they're actively like, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin my chances. And now it's like, I would like to ruin my chances. <laughs> I would love to burn bridges. There's a great, beautiful song by One Republic called Burn Bridges. It's not, or Burning My Bridges Down. It's not a hateful song. It's actually stunning. I'm going to play it after this. It I was going to ask you brain. to, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're here, the fuck was I going to talk about? Oh my God! Uh, I you were talking about your passions and uh, nihilistic cousin. Nihilistic cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was this time period that we talked about this on the older episodes during quarantine where we were going hiking, and oh. I really went from this like I had high spirits at the beginning. We, we were, it was like fun. <laughs> Early on, we're like we're going on a hike. Damn, I've been doing this for a month straight. I'm in really good shape. Mm -hmm. Ooh, me and my ex girlfriend really hitting off. It's super fun. I was really hyped. And as soon as, as soon as that ended, ex girlfriend stuff. It was like I was like, okay, here's one example. Because I was I was upset about people not like putting on their masks and like doing the quarantine thing, right? And, and Hassan was like. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, man. Like, we're all going to die anyway. And, like, if they want to, like, die, then just let them, you know? I didn't and say I, and I was like, I said it worse. And I was like, you know, well, I was like, what about people that are, like, have, like, pre existing conditions and, like, old people? Like, they're, they're going to die. Like, I don't know. No. It doesn't okay, matter. Let me, let me say it the way I said it. Because okay. you, you just made me sound like a fucking Republican. Dude. You, you were. You were, the, you were the, that's what you were sounding like. This is what I sounded like. This is what I sound like. I was like, look, man, the people who don't fucking care about masks, you can't, you can't explain it to them anyways, eh? They don't understand. <laughs> What's the point of trying to make people understand and wasting more of our time? We're all going to die. It's stupid. You can, you can spend your entire life working towards something, and it'll never fucking work out. All right. So who the fuck cares? And then Literally, on top of that, it was also <laughs> it was also that and like I, I was like I don't really care. You know, society sucks. Like you know, I care about the people in my life, and that's all that really matters. At I, the end of the day. I was like I was like I I don't care about helping other people. That's what. I yeah, said. yeah. You said something to that. You said like there was like two conversations we'd had that summer. Like you said that something like that like a year before, and I was, and I was like. So like basically like I I realized there was a pattern like anytime something bad was happening and suddenly you were like this big nihilistic all <laughs> uh, above it all person that saw the world for what it really was. I was like, great, we're spending time donating to this cause. Where's that money going? And to? then when and Need then when people? then when that stuff was like back on track, it was like I'm, I'm feeling more hopeful. I'm feeling more optimistic. I was like, sure, buddy, whatever you say. <laughs> okay, can we just take the time to acknowledge this for all the people who aren't maybe not my friends anymore but still listen to this podcast. That situation's over. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm. Yes. Because I'm consistent, and 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 I have things in my life that make me happy now. But it's not. Those aren't the reasons that I'm like this. I'm only jovial and passionate and all these things because that situation is over. Uh, that shit held me back. Like no, literally, like, bad days is based on those bad days. Yeah. Those four years were. Okay. I was thinking about earlier, like when this was gonna be a Netflix show. We're gonna have a Netflix show called Bad Days. No NDA. Uh, oh what? So. <laughs> Yo. Still? Oh. Yes, they're like ten year NDAs, dude. Why? That's loud. Because That's dumb. trouble? Because legality? Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about Cut it. it. I'm gonna out, leave I this guess. in there. I think I think we can get away with what we said, but we can't say much more than that. That's um, dumb. But yeah, look, the the concept of it uh, of bad days was really built upon that because th that time period we we can mine it for so many funny mo moments of just like heartache like that. I'm just sitting around for like. We're in the fucking woods, and Isaiah's like <laughs> two miles away from getting in a car and going home. So he's stuck here with his bag, just being like, "Man, fuck everything." I was just, like, so Isaiah, <laughs> look, "Look, dude, I'm just tired." <laughs> Remember when I used to say that all the time? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, just tired, I'm just bro. Tired. Yeah, Isaiah, like, and Isaiah'd be like, "Have you uh, talked to your therapist?" <laughs> 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 like, like what am i supposed to say to that kind of thing like, i'm just tired <laughs> like in general like, like this is like some suicide hotline stuff the suicide hotline story yes wait, oh wait it's the last should we save that for another episode it's the last uh, five minutes of it wait, which one though i don't know there's like there's one in, the, in your basement this past summer this past summer i didn't call the suicide hotline this no, summer. no no i was about to text the suicide hotline you were about to text the suicide yeah i had him on my phone the whole time when you were when oh. you were talking what you can save it for the next episode Wait, should we? I want to know. We we we, we just. Talk, I mean, we could go an extra five minutes. Sure, sure. Basically, like it was when when you and Connor and I were down in your basement, uh -huh. 
I forget what was what had teed you off this time. It was probably something to do with the person. And then that stuff ended in May. It ended in May. Okay. We still had a good bit of summer early before then. So I don't know what it was, but no, no, you were just talking about like someone had been mean to you. I think it was something like that. But it was like you were just like. I just I try so hard and like I just I just can't get it together, <laughs> and I'm I'm just honestly I'm just tired, and, and you know, I'm not gonna kill myself. I have like a Young Justice episode to watch, so something like that at the end of the day, and I was like I didn't want to leave. <laughs> I, I I don't know what it, what <laughs> situation like, like, I'm was. I'm laughing about it. I really was the level of depressed. Do, do, I don't, what was the situation about? Do you remember? It was with Trent, not Connor. Oh oh no no, no. Connor was there because I called Connor after it. There was Trent oh. and Connor. It was two times oh. this happened. Fuck, man. This is <laughs> the third time? Yo, I'm okay, guys. Fuck, I'm okay. <laughs> um, so, uh. Uh, so, I remember the Trent one. I think the context of the Connor one was to do with DX stuff. Because it was like it was like an off offshoot of the same kind of conversation. It was we were like talking big, about like how you you tried and people kept on letting you down and you just, people just didn't so like you. So there's this group of friends. And I think I'll, I'll speak to the, the Trent one, right? Mm-hmm. I love Trent. Trent is this amazing, charismatic, tall, white man who I adore. Everyone loves him. And I, I do not, in my personal opinion, think that... Uh, he warrants the kind of absolute love that he gets from everybody. No one does. Like, no human being does. <laughs> he literally just like, what's up, guys? <gasps> he said what's up to me! Like, that kind of dude. And he's just fucking tall. And he can it. just like he can just say anything and Bro, it'll and, start and, laughing and for no reason. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I fall and victim to And I'm not trying to, to dox his personal life and stuff like that, but like literally any person that's ever been in his life, ever will be in his life, will be obsessed with him and love with him forever. Like, that's just how he is. Um, we have this mutual friend. And she is, like, one of my closest friends in the world. Like, we used to hang out. People used to, like, think we were dating always because I would just be with her Mm 24-7. And I used to, like, stay at her house when I was really depressed and her parents and I were really tight. Like, such an important person to me. I introduce them. They know each other, but, like, I introduce them as friends. Trent transfers to Auburn. He goes to Auburn. He's hanging out with this person. Like, they become tighter. They, They do AU singers together. They become even closer. They're all in the same friend group. And, like, they love him a billion times more than they ever loved me. And then that's whatever, right? But it got to this point where I'm like, me and him have so many mutual people in our lives. And the thing is, they would die for him. He like he is fundamentally like uninterested in most of those people, but they would do just about anything for him. And I've he's done a, so he's much. He's a horror people. protagonist. Yeah, so it was just like this thing of like, that bogged me the fuck down. And he was complaining about things in... in I think we just got into each other's throats a lot about st- of that, that kind of stuff because he was talking about how... Um, like he just doesn't try and everybody loves him and he needs to be more aware of that and how he treats people and stuff like that. And uh, he and then he was like, I'm sorry that people – and this is the moment where he yelled at me and I like started – I fucking cried during this conversation. <laughs> Isaiah like scooted over to like put his arm around me. He's it was like, like hey, buddy. Yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, it's okay. It was like a thing of like – it's like, like I'm sorry that I had to like make money and make a career – to feel important or special because the people in my life don't like to make me special. I'm sorry that on your birthday they throw you this massive surprise party that 500 people are invited to and everybody comes and on my birthday one person holds up a lighter for me to blow out because no one fucking cares. Like I went on this whole rant because mm-hmm. I mean we've always had the same we've always been in the same circles and people love him. They think he's the greatest. Like, like, when's the last time that I had like a birthday party birthday party that was like a big huge fucking blowout celebration? The one time we did have a birthday party, Chris threw me a surprise party. It was a surprise party. I planned that. I used Chris to plan that. <laughs> it was me. For anybody who was at that party, fun fact, I planned the entire thing. It was him. Um, Chris picked the activity. I planned the whole thing, and it was all a ruse to get me and my ex-girlfriend in the same room. Oh. Yep, and it worked out. She liked me at that point. I don't point think I again. remember so that. I wouldn't You were there. I, you were there. I pictures of you from that time oh, period. Maybe. Um, but besides the point. So me and Trent got into it about all that stuff. And that, that, that time period like really got to me because it was like, I keep achieving goal after goal, miles after milestone. And you're getting our friends blank, blank got into grad school. And it's like to be a fucking math teacher. Like they got into grad school to be a third grade math <laughs> teacher. And I hit a million followers and I got like three text messages mm-hmm. and they got, went to grad school that everyone gets accepted into. And it was like 500 Instagram posts. So it was like this inferiority thing. Cause at the time my value was so tied into the like, people. Yeah. Um, that Especially was not, social media. Bro, I thought you were saying you had a suicide story. Like you, no, you no, 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 no. Suicide hotline while that was going on. Yeah. Yeah. What no, do no, I no, do, no, not bro. that one. It was the <laughs> second one with Connor when you were just like, I couldn't, I couldn't get you out of the doomer mentality. I couldn't say anything that would, that would lift your spirit at all. What I was, was like, okay, I really want to figure out, I'll look through text messages or something. Like I want to know what was happening at the time. I, I, it was like not too far after the Trent thing. Like it wasn't, 
Maybe like, it was just like an offshoot of that. That's what I'm thinking it was. Which, and by the way, the, the whole thing with the, that, that one specific friend, I brought up that friend because that, that is like a really funny, weird situation of like, they, Zay's been around me and them since then. There's nothing, like we're not, we don't have any beef at all. They act like I'm not in the room. It is. It's so <laughs> fucking cringe. And they've done it multiple times. I've talked to them multiple times. They're just a crazy person. I'm, I'm, I'm past it at this point. But. It happens, bro. The other suicide hotline story. So that one took five minutes. We're gonna, uh, this is going to be an extra long episode. I don't really care. I think this is one of the funnier stories that's ever happened in my life. Okay. So, in in 2019, uh, December of 2019, me and the old ex-girlfriend stuff had ramped up significantly. Like, more so in the three years prior. It was it was honestly, like, looking like it was going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they just, like, they, they had planned to for us to go out and get dinner or something. And then they just canceled on me. It wasn't a date, but it was, like... You know, they've yeah. randomly been talking to me after we agreed not to speak anymore. It looks like it was heading one way or the other. And um, they uh, they cancel on me and they're supposed to reschedule and they don't. And and then outside of that, other things were going on. I think a family stuff going on. It's Christmas. I have really bad seasonal affective disorder. So uh, I just got really sad. I got really depressed. I got really low one night. So I call the suicide hotline. <laughs> I call the suicide hotline. And, uh, you know, I'm, t- I'm telling this guy of this issues. And he's just like, he's like, I'm so sorry. Have you ever, you know, tried to to get your ex girlfriend to introduce you to or to like set you up with someone? It's like, you want me to ask my ex girlfriend who I'm in love with to set me up with someone today? He goes, yeah, you know, that's like a good idea. You know, she could introduce you to make some new friends and stuff like that. She could really help you. She could introduce your friends. And then he like said more like like he just <laughs> like kept going. He's just like, you know, um, you know, uh it's just she's a person that you know and you don't know any other people, right? I'm like, What? <laughs> I know other people, man. Like you've never met anyone other than this girl, right? Like it's just like like a person who just has no social understanding of the world, right? He just keeps talking. Like he keeps talking. And halfway through the conversation, I like start laughing. I'm like, bro, I'm not going to kill myself, but not because you like gave me the best advice because this is the dumbest shit I heard in my entire life. It's so ridiculous. I have to live to tell the story. So that's why I didn't kill myself. Did you tell him that? Uh, I think I was just like, I think I'm good now. Talk, uh, bye. But maybe that's it. Maybe like he, they hired him and they realized what his potential was, but he doesn't even realize. Bro, no, he definitely caused some suicides that night. <laughs> like, like, there's no fucking way. The shit that he was saying, he's like, he's like, well, you know, you when should you're just get a better job. You know, if you're like at ten million dollars in dude, debt, dude, no, you should ask your current boss and go ask to, him to refer you to a new place. Yeah, go, go go to Las Vegas with your boss and the compete, and whoever wins the most poker gets uh, it was the just money. Insane. I didn't kill myself because the suicide hotline gave me such bad advice <laughs> that I couldn't have killed myself because it was so funny. Oh, uh, brother, we've gone over significantly on our time for today. Uh, Guys, a lot of bad days here in this truly, podcast and a lot of best stories. You know what I mean? Indeed. But look, it's been so much fun to do this podcast. We're three episodes in. We're going consistent. This is yeah. the most consistent we've ever been. It's only going to be more consistent once I move back on this side of town. Yeah. And we're having multiple guests coming on uh, soon. Graham wants to be on. Connor wants oh, to be on. So sounds lit. We're going to be cycling in more people. The production value is going to go up a good bit, too. And I'm having fun with this. This podcast doesn't really make money. So I hope you guys know we're doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. One thing we completely neglected to cover was the youtube stuff um oh, yeah i did a bunch of things with youtube this week partnered up with them and i gave a bunch of youtube sessions and talks so if you're a creator listening to this and you're really interested in that kind of stuff next podcast we're gonna cover it and we're gonna talk about how uh a i talked to h3 h3 productions yeah oh, oh well, but what right, happened guys. here i'm hassan kader i'm isaiah kendrick and we sincerely hope your bad days are your best stories we'll see you guys next week adios uh,